Hello. In this video, you will learn about Local Interconnect Network, or LIN, based on an example and the development tools from K2L. Firstly, we will quickly explain the foundations of LIN and the development tools from K2L before going right to the example. The LIN specification 1.0 was first released in 1999. As of today, the current LIN specification is version 2.2. The idea behind LIN was to provide a cost-efficient serial bus system for usage cases where the bandwidth of controller area network, or CAN, is not required. Typically, these are sensor and low bandwidth control applications. Let us look at some features and advantages of the LIN bus based on the image of a three-node LIN system. One advantage of LIN is that only one wire is needed for the communication. So LIN is a single wire bus. Speeds up to 20 kilobits per second can be reached. In a LIN system, there is always one master that controls which messages or frames are transmitted over the bus. In doing so, the master sends the first part of every frame, the frame header, in a broadcast fashion to all nodes in the network. Based on an identifier that is part of the header, a certain response is triggered. In our example with the three nodes, the slave node in the middle maybe responds to an ID of 0, while the slave on the right answers to an ID of 1. In the picture at the bottom, the structure of a LIN frame is displayed in greater detail. At the beginning of the frame, we see the break field that is used to indicate the beginning of a new frame. It is followed by the sync field. The sync field is used by the slave nodes to synchronise themselves to the clock cycle of the master node. The last field of the header is the identifier. The response of a slave consists of a payload field with up to eight payload bytes and a checksum field. A master node can also act as a slave to transmit data to the slave nodes in the LIN network. Depending on the preconditions that need to be fulfilled to transmit a frame, different frame types are differentiated. The first frame type is the unconditional frame. As the name indicates, there are no special requirements that need to be fulfilled for the transmission of such a frame. The master transmits the header and the responsible slave sends a response. Event-triggered frames have more than one unconditional frame associated with it. When the master transmits the header for an event-triggered frame, only the slave that has a response with updated data will reply. If more than one slave responds to an event-triggered frame, a collision occurs. If no slave has updated data, the rest of the frame after the header is idle. Sporadic frames have, like event-triggered frames, more than one unconditional frame associated with it. The difference with event-triggered frames is that in sporadic frames, it is always the master itself that replies to the header with the unconditional frame response that has been updated, and that has the highest priority. Finally, there are diagnostic and reserved frames. We will ignore these for now. Lastly, we have schedule tables. Schedule tables define when a certain header is transmitted over the bus by the master. In other words, schedule tables define the communication that takes place on the bus. We will hear more about the frame types and the schedule table in a second when we come to the example. Before we look at the example, a quick introduction into the development tools we will apply. Optilizer Studio and Optilizer Mocha CL. The Optilizer Mocha CL is a hardware interface that addresses specifically CAN and LIN developments. It offers six CAN interfaces and six LIN interfaces. The Optilizer Studio, in turn, is development software running on a PC. The image indicates the first use case of the combination of Optilizer Studio and Optilizer Mocha CL, analysis of what is going on on the bus. The Mocha CL interfaces directly to the LIN bus. On the other side, it is connected via USB to the PC that is running Optilizer Studio. The second use case goes beyond pure analysis. Here, a LIN node is replaced or simulated by Optilizer Mocha CL and Optilizer Studio. The Mocha CL can, in this case, act either as a LIN master or as a LIN slave. We will see both use cases in a moment. In order to explain LIN further in practice, we will use an artificial but readily comprehensible example. 
we look again at a LIN system with three nodes as before. We will implement all three nodes with the Optalizer Mocha CL. Out of the six LIN interfaces, we will configure one interface of the Mocha CL as a LIN master and two interfaces as LIN slaves, slave one and slave two. All LIN interfaces are interconnected with a green wire, as you can see in the image. In order to highlight schedule tables and the different frame types, we will use the communication as depicted on this slide. We will use four frames that are contained in three schedule tables. The default schedule table contains two frames that are sent by the master. The first frame communicates a speed value with an unconditional frame. An LED status is also issued by the master with a sporadic frame. With the unconditional frame in the temperature schedule table, slave 1 shares a temperature value. And finally, in the switch schedule table, an event triggered frame is used to ask the slaves about the status of their switches. The information about nodes in the network, the frames and the schedule tables are included in the so-called LDF or LIN description file. We will load this file into Optalizer Studio for configurating the LIN interfaces and for disassembling LIN messages. Let's move to Optalizer Studio now to record some traces and inject some LIN messages into the LIN bus. Here we see the Optalizer Studio Foundation CL graphical user interface. In the Device Manager, we can configure the six CAN and six LIN interfaces of the connected Mocha CL. But before we will do that, we load the LIN description file as already discussed. OK, back to the configuration of the LIN interfaces. The first interface we want to configure is the LIN1 interface. After the selection of the LDF file, we need to decide which node of the network we want to simulate on LIN interface 1. For the master, we can additionally decide which schedule table should be executed initially and as default. In a similar fashion, we can configure the LIN interfaces 2 and 3 as slave 1 and 2. Of course, there is no schedule table that can be configured because this is only master functionality. As we have completed the configuration, it is time to start tracing. We can see messages that come from the execution of the default schedule table by the LIN master. In order to tidy up the trace, we can filter out the messages that come in on the LIN interfaces 4, 5 and 6 because they are not needed in our example. From the remaining messages in the trace, we can see that the set speed frame is received on all the three interfaces, followed by a silent slot for the sporadic set LED frame. In order to transmit a new value in the sporadic frame, the payload needs to be updated. This we can do by activities. Let me load an activity file that has already been prepared. By sending a LIN message with identifier set LED status, a new value for the LED status is transmitted to the LIN master running on LIN interface 1 of the Mocha CL. After an update of the value in the LIN master, the next slot for the sporadic set LED frame is no longer silent and the corresponding message is transmitted over LIN, as one can see from messages 171 to 174. Let us come to another important functionality of the LIN master implementation in Optalizer Studio, the change of a schedule table. As we have configured, the LIN master is executing the default schedule table so far. We can change this with the help of the LIN switch schedule table activity. We just need to select one of the available schedule tables that were described in the LDF from the drop-down menu, decide how the new schedule table is to be applied, and press the Start button. 
As you can see from the trace, the schedule table has changed. Now the temperature frame is transmitted cyclically on the LIN bus. When we change the value of the temperature in the LIN slave 1 running on LIN interface 2 and click the send button, the data value changes. The last topic we want to look at in this video is an event-triggered frame. In order to transmit event-triggered frames, we can select the switch status schedule from the drop menu of the LIN switch schedule table activity. As you can see from the trace, there are no responses to the event-triggered frames from slaves 1 and 2. In order to trigger responses, we need to update the values for the switch status in the slaves. When we update the value for slave 1, one event-triggered frame is answered by slave 1 on LIN interface 2. In a similar fashion, when we update the value for slave 2, one event-triggered frame is answered by slave 2 on interface 3.